had this 10th grade teacher, Mr. Peterson. He'd always say, you can provide for your family or save the planet, but you can't do both <laughs> because purpose will never pay the bills. I did not like Mr. Peterson. <laughs> that was bad advice. Purpose is meaningful actions with meaningful outcomes. Did you know 90% of people would now take a pay cut for purpose? Are you one of the 90%? Is a lack of purpose at work causing a lack of fulfillment? Could life offer you more? In my experience, you can live a life of purpose and love every minute of it. And yes, purpose can pay the bills. It all starts with the big question. How are you becoming the person that you need to be? The person the world needs you to be. That is what this talk is about. When I was 22, I was the lead singer of a rock band called Beer for Breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I had blue hair, tattoos, just going with the flow of life. Then, one day, driving down the highway, I was blinded by headlights. Crash! A head-on collision. And I remember just sitting there, motionless, just staring at the flashing red lights and the shattered glass. I had these flashbacks of my mother. And she used to always say, Sean, you have so much potential. Someday you'll find your purpose. <laughs> it drove me crazy. But now, in this moment, whew, those words had meaning. What if I didn't live to use that potential? If I died, what was my purpose? And the thoughts kept coming back to me in the ambulance, at the hospital again and again. What was my purpose? The next couple weeks, <laughs> they were tough. I dislocated all my ribs, messed up my neck, my back, my knee. I could barely move, but I could think and I could write. So for the first time, I started to work on a purpose plan. I knew I needed something meaningful, yet blurry enough that I could just figure it out as I go. And after about a week, I had a thought, and it sparked something in me. I wrote it down, and it sparked something even greater. Then I spoke it into existence. I will become a change the world strategist. <laughs> I had no clue what that meant. No idea how I'd do it. Ah, oh, but for the first time, I had this blurry vision of something that I wanted to become, and it felt good. But my challenge was clear. I needed to go from this guy, whose resume said played in a rock band, <laughs> to a change the world strategist. How many books a year do you read? This guy, zero. <laughs> <laughs> but now, Books had meaning. I started to become hooked on reading and learning and self-development. And by the way, <laughs> remember that car accident? 100% not my fault. <laughs> and I remember during the trials, there's this angry insurance lawyer. And he said, hey kid, what are you going to do with your life? I proudly replied, <laughs> change the world strategist. <laughs> He scowled. Aim for something more realistic. I just smiled and said, but then I might end up like you. <laughs> I did not like that lawyer. So I continued on my blurry path anyways. I spent the next couple years creating small businesses. Eventually, I joined a GPS technology company as a one-man marketing department. Then two years later, I was vice president of the entire company. Then one day, the CEO of that company gave me a phone call, and he said, Sean, I think I've figured out our next business. 
It's called the plastic bank. Now, we did not have all the answers. Not at all. Just a big, blurry vision to stop ocean plastic and global poverty at the same time. <laughs> and with that in mind, we made a commitment to just become the people that the world needed us to be and figure it out as we go. Today, we help thousands of people around the world, like Lisa in Haiti. After the earthquake, Lisa was widowed with seven children, illiterate, no job, no bank account. Now, Lisa can collect the plastic from her environment and bring it to her local plastic bank. Lisa receives a special bonus payment on top of the market rate of plastic. Now, this ensures that she can always provide for her family and send her children to school. Our plastic bank locations, they act like a convenience store for the world's poor, where everything they need, they can afford by collecting the plastic garbage that litters their communities. Our members get access to a blockchain-secured digital bank account, health insurance, education. We dignify recycling. We provide hope. We do this in Haiti, Philippines, Indonesia, Brazil, and we are expanding globally. And I am proud to say that we have already recycled over 11 million pounds of plastic. <laughs> and we are on pace to recycle 11 million more in the next 12 months. And this is not a charity. We sell the social plastic collected to our programs to some of the largest companies on the planet. Soon, when you buy a Windex bottle from Essie Johnson, you'll be helping to stop ocean plastic and poverty by supporting our programs. We bring purpose to products. But more importantly, we bring an authentic purpose to our partners. Some partners have done amazing things. And a couple years ago, Bill Stark from IBM came to our office to say thank you. Bill told me I was stuck in a rut. Now, using blockchain technology to provide the unbankable with the digital savings while stopping ocean plastic, Bill said, I tell my kids about this, and they are proud of their dad. Bill was a purpose champion in one of the largest companies on the planet, IBM, and he helped bring an authentic change. And soon, more purpose champions like Bill started to emerge. Some have helped to neutralize their plastic footprint at work or at home. Others have enrolled their schools and churches into our ocean plastic education programs, and now, some of our partners are even helping to provide career training to the collectors in our program for a life beyond recycling. And all of these purpose programs are now possible because purpose is starting to be recognized as a new way to attract and retain talented people like you. Purpose really can pay the bills. For me, I wanted to be a change the world strategist because it just felt like the best use of me on this planet. But what's the best use of you? What makes it meaningful for you? The world might need you to be the best parent, the best teacher, the best neighbor, or a workplace champion doing what you do best. But whatever it is, just become that person and figure it out as you go. However, your actions are really only half of what becoming truly means. Have you ever thought to yourself that once I get that job or complete that project or hit that goal, then, then I'll be happy. But you get the thing and you realize something's missing. In 2017, I was in an award-winning documentary called A Plastic Ocean. I was even a keynote speaker on their international film tour. 
Now, as an ex-wannabe rocker, going on a European tour was a dream come true. And I remember this one stop in Brazil. This young girl says, wow, you must be the happiest person on the planet. You're living the dream. Whew. That thought kept in my mind all night because I was living according to the plan. Yet judgment was just clouding my appreciation for everything. Have you ever been to a beautiful restaurant? The waiter comes out and brings you this gorgeous plate of food. You take the first bite. And all you can think is, eh, I've had better. <laughs> judgment in comparison destroys the gift of every moment. And that caused a paradigm shift for me. I need to level up my self-development routine to include a love every moment of every day routine. Habits to help withstand any bump in the road without slowing down. And for me, it really started with four key pillars. It was mindfulness, meditation, working out, and most importantly, just letting go. And after a lot of practice, <laughs> I was able to replace judging every moment, judging every person, judging myself with loving every moment, loving every person, and loving myself. And when you can combine that state of mind with meaningful actions, with meaningful outcomes, and still do it in a way that pays the bills, that is when you can truly experience the gift of life because even those tough, character-building moments of life, they become a gift when they help you become the person that the world needs you to be. So tomorrow morning and every day after, ask yourself the big question. How are you becoming the person that you need to be?